Welcome to IMS's Digital Curriculum Night. This is for 7th grade language arts. I will be covering language arts curriculum for 7th grade, instructional strategies that I use, grading policies, communication, attendance, materials needed, the WAG, and Schoology versus Skyward. Hello, my name is Kate Motter and I will be your child's 7th grade language arts teacher this year. So a little bit about me. I am from the Children of the Corn, the land of the Children of the Corn, Minnesota. Uh, specifically Mankato, Minnesota. <laughs> For those of you who've heard of it, it has a mall. I've been in many cities in, in my adult life. Most of them were spent in Baltimore, where I got my undergraduate degree. Uh, Bachelor of Arts in English with a concentration in creative writing. I received my Master's of Education in Secondary English uh, from the University of Minnesota. And this will be my fourth... Yeah. Fourth, fourth year at IMS. <laughs> I have two corgis, count them, two, uh, Jack and Toast, and they are my children. <laughs> I have about 50 plants scattered around, uh, probably close to a million books in between the various cities I've lived in, this room, and my classroom, and I love my job. Seventh grade LA curriculum focuses heavily on expository writing. Expository writing is writing that seeks to explain, illuminate, or expose, which is where the word expository comes from. We also have three novel study units we do as a class. The first one is The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. The second one is Ghost Boys by Jewel Parker Rhodes. And the third one is Hotel on the Quarter of Bitter and Sweet by Jamie Ford. Each unit focuses on a specific common core standard as well as skills that we have identified as necessary for students to master in order for them to succeed in all of their future exploits in academia, high school, college if they choose to attend. For example, the summative assessment for the Outsiders unit is an expository essay where students will be exploring theme. In addition, my students are also required to participate in an independent reading project, which is two parts, reading and writing. Students will choose uh, a minimum of five texts per trimester, and I say texts and genres because I don't, it doesn't matter to me where the stories come from, in what format. It, they, students can read books, they can watch a film if you're okay with that. They can read poetry, they can listen to podcasts, they can listen to audiobooks. I've had students interview grandparents, I've had students read cookbooks. <laughs> so whatever they are already interested in reading is what I want them to explore. The second part of the independent reading project is to write a three paragraph reading reflection once a month on something they have read or explored that trimester. The paragraphs will detail a text-to-text -text connection, a meaningful quote, and whether the text is a window or a mirror to them. The writing portion is to strengthen their general skills. It never hurts to write a little bit extra. <laughs> um, and the reading portion is the rationale of why I ask students to do extra reading that outside of class is so many reasons, but here are a few. Um, it strengthens the brain. Reading regularly strengthens the brain. It increases empathy. It builds your vocabulary better than anything else. It prevents cognitive decline. It reduces stress. It helps you sleep. It alleviates depression sometimes. It Apparently, there are claims that it lengthens your lifespan, so I'm going to live to be like 200 <laughs> the amount that I read. This project just builds on the things that we're already doing in class. These are just a few of the instructional strategies that I employ pretty much all the time. Um, for authentic and relevant course material, it's, it's important because authentic sources, real examples and cases taken from our history or the natural world provide very rich context and nuance that hypotheticals uh, so sometimes lack, so I try to incorporate that as often as possible. Asking students to analyze and interpret primary materials and more relevant content to them can really boost critical thinking and definitely engagement. It's also very important for me to have a variety of multimedia resources available to students, uh, not only because providing video, audio, reading, and interactive content can make a course much more engaging, but also it makes a course very much more accessible. So especially for students who may struggle with a particular medium, like uh, if you have a reading barrier like dyslexia, or a video barrier such as a hearing or attention problems, those folks are at a major disadvantage if that medium is the only way to engage with material. So it's important to me to provide variety.
Student creation of content both collaboratively and individually is also just an excellent strategy to use. Students can show their engagement with rich instructional materials by creating similarly rich products. Um, things students create should include opportunities to work together and to express themselves individually. There should be both. Um, for example, we can do online debates about a course topic or create short podcasts as presentations and all of that can be incorporated within the content and they can teach each other. Promote reflection and communication through quality asynchronous discussion. Asynchronous work is going to be equally important as synchronous work this year since it's about equal time in a week given to both synchronous and async. So I will be coaching and modeling for students how to have an asynchronous conversation that is productive, which is sometimes a hard skill to learn. And I will be using democratic classroom strategies to help build community. So uh, such as each student will have a classroom job and we'll have class meetings once a week so students can talk to each other and it's totally student led. Um, some of the benefits of democratic classroom strategies are better attendance, greater classroom participation, there's usually a higher academic achievement, and there is increased motivation and an enthusiasm for learning. Grades are pretty straightforward. They are based on points. They will be updated in Skyward. Please do not check Schoology for grades. There are four categories for student work. One is assignments, that's usually asynchronous homework that they're doing. One is independent reading, that's the independent reading project, the, the log, as well as the reflections. One is summative assessments, which are final projects, big essays, sometimes tests, stuff like that. And last is classwork or practice, which will be synchronous things we do during class. Communication is probably even more important than usual <laughs> this school year. Um, so the best way to contact me is uh, my email address, my school IMS email address. Um, from there we can schedule a Zoom appointment, you can schedule a phone call if you prefer the old-fashioned way. Um, please do not hesitate to contact me with any questions, concerns, comments, opinions, etc. Attendance is required and it will be taken during every Zoom class daily as per IMS's attendance policy. If you have to miss class, please let me know ASAP as soon as possible. There will probably be activities we will be doing in class that students will need to make up. Um, check the WAG, the Week at a Glance, and the Schoology calendar for due dates. You're welcome to talk to me during office hours, uh, email me, just communicate. Materials needed are pretty straightforward for most of your students' other classes, most likely couple things. I highly recommend getting a keyboard this year. It helps promote typing skills, which are one of those necessary things in this brave new world. Um, I have tendonitis and carpal tunnel, and having a keyboard will very much help prevent those types of things from happening. I'm going to teach students um, ways to take care of their wrists and tendons this year too, but keyboards will definitely help promote those habits. And I will have ebooks and audiobooks available for all the texts we read in class, but if you would like a hard copy, please either reach out to IMS's librarians or you can purchase one for yourself. The Week at a Glance or the WAG is sort of a guideline slash overview of what we will be learning in class this week. It will be updated every Monday. It will always live in course updates as well as in the week of whatever date we're in, folders in the Language Arts Schoology page. And the purpose of the WAG is to help everybody stay organized. Differences between Schoology and Skyward. So Schoology should primarily be used to check on upcoming assignments so students know what is due when, so look for due dates in the calendar. Um, it's a chance for them to communicate with teachers via Schoology message as well as to find other resources Skyward is the grade book, so use Skyward to check grades and as well as find a list of any missing assignments. If you have any questions, please contact me uh, at caitlinmotter at mercerislandschools.org. I will put together an FAQ answering everybody's queries and I'll put that in the 7th grade language arts WAG so you know where to find it. I'm looking forward to a interesting but excellent school year.